So I want to continue the idea of already being so. And I made a video about this in the past. But it's going to, I'm going to stitch it together between the latter experiment and already being so. Because I think these two things are important. Because one implies a physical object which is climbing the ladder, and the other one implies a change in, in one's conception. And how can we apply the idea of climbing a ladder instead of trying to get a ladder to a conception of oneself? How can we apply that same principle of climbing it? And in this case, it would be already being it. And that I the the common thing I see is not only do we always try to get ladders, we always try to get conceptions. And we, what we will do is we create conditions because we don't think we can actually be the thing we want to be. And so we try to minimize it. We make our desires smaller. We modify them to whatever it is. Instead of, we, we, I mean, the reason why we do that is because we keep judging after our senses. And if you keep judging after your senses, what you judge after is what you'll get. And so you'll keep getting the sense world. You'll keep getting the limitations that you see instead of expanding oneself to identifying oneself with one's imagination you will continue to identify yourself with your sense limitations. And, and it's not a supernatural thing. It's nothing crazy. It's simply identifying yourself with the one inside of yourself. And so you identify yourself with the one that's climbing it. You identify yourself with the one that already is it. And what that means is that we go to the end. And so the I am is our end. So in the beginning, you can ask yourself, what do I already want to be? Ask yourself that question and know that God's name is I am. So if I need a if I I need a certain power to create this, I need a power to I need a power that can change me. Well, I am is a power. And so it's considered the one power through Neville's lens and through my lens. And so if I need to change something, I need to change my I am. For that's the creator of my life. But I change my I am by going to the end. And the end is me already being it. And so you see, you want to see someone, as Neville said, gainfully employed. You don't imagine them, you don't see them as unemployed and go, man, okay, I'm going to see them with a job and I hope they get it. Or I'm going to see them with a job and you, in your heart you feel fear that they might not get the job. Or you fear that they might not get it in time. Or you, whatever fear comes up. You fear that, what if it doesn't work? So you have all these fears that might come up, all these questions of, from the voice of fear. And what I want you to do is silence that voice, and I want you to see him already being employed. Your goal is to see it already. If, if imagining creates reality, then I must imagine successfully. And to imagine successfully, to imagine success, is to imagine the outcome already being accomplished, the desired, the objective already being fulfilled. That is the... That's the way I should imagine. And so if I want, so in the beginning, I change myself by going to my end. And so my, my end becomes my beginning. And my beginning becomes my end. We just simply flip these two. And you'll see that the end goal is to be it, right? And so you want to already be it now. You want to see them already being employed now. You want to see your friend already being successful now. It doesn't cost you anything. You know, I was, the other day I was waiting in line and there's a little boy in front of me and he said something that I've actually repeated to myself, inside myself. And so you can see life can feel like an echo. But he said, you know, the one poster I wanted here, of course they don't have it. And I've said, I've, I've, I know what feeling he's feeling. And I've had that feeling many times in my life. But the day will come when he will realize that he has to change that script. He's going to have to realize that life is not, against him. Life isn't against him. And I have felt that for long, for many, many years, I stayed in a state of feeling a victim to life. And I was, I became a victim. I really, truly was. I felt sorry for myself. And then I really was sorry for myself. I become the things I contemplate myself on. And if I feel like what that boy felt, which is, of course, the thing I wanted isn't here. If I keep feeling that, I will keep creating from that because that's what I'm giving my attention to inside myself. And so you see indifference becomes a tool that you use when you want to change yourself. If you you have to see that the thing you dislike or this this state that this boy is in, he's going to have to be indifferent to it one day. 
and see that it doesn't stop him. It's simply some, it's part of his own creation. At one point, we might have loved the state that we're in, that we might despise now. At one point, we loved it enough to become it. We believed in it, or we were deceived or convinced by something, by our senses, that we are the thing that we do not want to be. And so I have to eventually stop judging after my uh, senses. I mean, to the point where, as Neville said, you might have a friend call you and they tell you the opposite news. They say it didn't work, or they say they don't know that you imagined it, but they tell you the, the bad news. Neville said he would simply get off the phone with them after they're done with their conversation and imagine saying that it did work. So you go to the end, you keep forgiving it over and over again, and that's how you apply it to yourself. When you change your conception to something more lovely towards yourself, when you change your and shape your I am with with pressures of love, when you're as if you're molding a, a pot of clay and you apply hand, you, you use your hands to apply pressure to the clay. When you finally you apply the the pressures of love onto you, you'll start to mold your I am in a more lovely image. And so we are we're truly image making here. That is what Neville called this a school of image making. And so I practice every single day to change the images of myself into something I love. And then I'm forgiven myself over and over and over again. I don't leave myself in want. The same way Neville didn't leave that man who told him it didn't work in that state that it didn't work. We, he picked him up and moved him into a better state. He imagined himself seeing and hearing success. And the, the success in this case is, is the end. So in my beginning, I go to my end, and the end is already being that. That is the secret in changing oneself from the inside out, because in the inside, we go to ends in our, inside of ourselves. We don't meddle with the middle. And that is how you have your imagination run smoothly. You'll see how much more freeing it is if you test it on someone else. And imagine, without telling them, imagine them more successful. Just see them more successful. Put them in that state of mind. Regardless of where they're at right now, just put them there. Don't judge after the sense world. Judge after imagination. And then you'll start to free yourself because you can create anything in imagination. And you can create by having faith in the already being so. And that's the, that is how you stitch together the idea of climbing it, which is you don't try to get a ladder, you climb the ladder. And so you don't try to be a conception. You don't try, you be it already. You don't, if you want a skill, if you want to learn a skill, you go to what the outcome, if you had the, if your skills were, and if your skills were if pushed to the maximum and you were, and you produce something with your skills, what would that end goal be? And you see that end goal already being the case, regardless if you don't know the skills right now, the skills will come. Things that, things that are needed will fulfill that void. And, and the same is true for conceptions. And so I must always go to my end. And if you have a lot of anxiety about that, then you're not imagining it already being the case. If you're one hoping that your friend does get the job, then you're not really imagining it already being done. And that's how we create. We create by going to the ends. In the beginning, we create our ends. And your end is your I amness. So you change your I amness meaning you're, you're, the self is always remaining the same, but the self is in different states of mind. And so you hate the state you're in right now. Know that it's a state. Don't identify yourself more than with it because then you'll start to think you can't change it. See it as a state of mind that comes with the sets of behaviors and events unfold from that state. So events don't happen to us. Events unfold from our states of mind. See it as a state of mind that is complete and Grant yourself the ability to move into a different state of mind. And it can happen in an instant. It doesn't have to be something really hard. If, if it's very difficult, if there's a lot of resistance, then you don't see yourself in a state. You think it's something more. The, the, the desire you want to be, that is also a state of mind. And eventually you might dislike that one. You want to move. But regardless, you have a goal right now. You have a desire, a desired end outcome. Go to it already being fulfilled. The, the inner man doesn't look for a ladder inside himself. Do you see how in this world, we have to go to the basement and look for it? And you know, where the hell is it? And we, we realize that we gave it to an uncle and then they have it and then we don't know where it's at. And then we have to go buy another ladder. We have to do all these things to get a ladder. But inside, the ladder is already provided. 
in here, I have to learn the skills and learn the knowledge and do all these things to become the desired outcome or the desired conception. But inside, I'm already the conception. And I identify myself with that being instead of the one of the senses. No more Esau. And now I identify with Jacob. And I judge after Jacob's eyes. And I know this will help you because it, it eliminates that fear. It neutralizes it. And it neutralizes that anxiety of trying to get a ladder and trying to be something and hoping it works out. It neutralizes that. You go to the end. The end is already being so. The end is climbing it. You're not looking for the ladder inside yourself. You're not looking for the conception. No more seeking inside. You start to fulfill and start to be. And so your outer ears might hear bad news, but you go to your inward ears and you change it to good news. You hear the good news from it within. And then you put your trust in it because you will, you will put your trust into something. You put your trust into the immortal ears and the divine, the, the divine eyes. And so I'm glad I was able to, if you apply that, you will remove that friction from the inside. And I, I should also say that I also offer now one-on-one conversations with me. And if that interests you, just email me. It's in the description. And if you email me, there'll be an automated message that will come to you and it will give you pricing and the date and all the information you need. So if you're interested in that, then then it's available. And just thanks for listening. And remember to hear and see fulfillment. Just hear it and see it. Don't do anything else. Just hear it and see it.